You're doing pretty good, Oliver. Oh, about halfway. Yeah, well, that's one of left better than not hardly any. That's right. Good <laughs> Now, this is one of my old customers here. About 50 years. <laughs> well, ever since I guess you, I've been cutting yours ever since I started over. Yeah. Be 50, soon be 59 years in February. Well, you've been, you've been to the beach lately, Oliver? You... Yeah, I went first to April. Mm -hmm. You do any fishing? No. It wasn't batting too good mm -hmm. anyway. Well, Oliver, I believe I'm going to hold you for. So you can get the barber shop somewhere in here. Yeah, see if I can find one. Yeah. <laughs> I knew Lawrence before, but I officially met him. Uh, I had a friend working down here, and he was in the process of leaving. He was going to another town, and uh, we were talking, and Lawrence wanted me to come and, and help him a while till he found someone. He tells everybody now, he said, said he come here and went to work and said, Lark said, won't you help me to find somebody? And he said, I've been here 42 years and you ain't found nobody yet. I'm assuming that he's found someone, uh, no contract yet, but I'm assuming that. Uh, the chief of police at, uh, here at uh, Drexel, uh, uh, what was his name? Bill Lappert. Bill, Bill Lappert. Yeah. He used to, I believe he kind of started things off here, didn't he? He, he was an instigator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was an instigator, I'll put it Yeah, Bill way. played, he played the mandolin, you know. Mm -hmm. On a slow day, he left his mandolin here, and even on duty, he would kind of sneak down and play a song and be on the way. Well, it sort of got started like me, that. Me, me and him got started playing like that, and then Joe Patton, he come in and saw us playing, and he's living down here at, uh, right there beside the J.B. Powell's Inn. Yeah. So Joe, he got his banjo and he'd come up a little bit and then just, you know, just kept escalating or whatever you want to call it. They're having, we have a Saturday jamboree back there. We have music in the back room every Saturday. Have bluegrass and have sometimes eight or 10, sometimes maybe 15 guys. There was about 15 back there a while ago. It had at least, had six guitars at one time, six guitars and three mandolins. You don't need that many guitars, about two is enough. But you know, when somebody comes in, you can't say, you know, you're playing a guitar, won't you just leave? <laughs> a lot of folks say, what time does music start? And it's not really scheduled because most things are, you know. Uh, but they look at you strange when you, whenever they want to. I mean, I hate to say that, not being sarcastic, but these fellows are independent and they come in and 
they may bring their instruments in, lay it in the back room, come out and eat some peanuts, talk with us, get some coffee, trade knives, tell a few jokes, uh, settle the world problems, and uh, eventually play music if and when they want to. And that's hard to explain. That's hard to explain to a lot of people because uh, that's why they're here, uh, to enjoy it, not to get in a hurry. Well, uh, not a lot of them just come for for the laid back uh, atmosphere, you know, ain't no no rush or nothing like that. And of course, uh, the bigger majority of them, like, they come to hear the music, or, and then uh, part of them, once in a while, want to come in and get a haircut. So. <laughs> There's not many service stations and country stores about that you can go and relax and hang out like they used to. And to me, that's therapy. And uh, a lot of the fellows are the same boat that I am in the way their wives are deceased, the kids are grown and gone. Uh, I don't have that much for retirees in this area. And uh, they come and hang out with us, and we're glad to have them. Well, we got a pretty good bunch. My wife tells a lot of people, she said, that it's all right for ladies to go up there because she said it's a good bunch of boys up there. And she said they never say nothing out of the way or, you know, it's, and they don't. Uh, a lot of them come here and play for nothing when they could go somewhere else and play, you know, and get, get paid a little bit, which they do. They just like because it's fun, you come here for the fun of it. Because I love bluegrass music. <laughs> That's it. Well, I love the music fine. It's my friends. And it's some of the boys in our place with me on some of the shows around here. It's in their blood, I believe. It's in mine, I mean. It's something that you just, it's real happy for me, I guess. A lot of people, everybody loves music of some kind, you know. I don't know, back when, back in the, Late 60s, early 70s, I used to listen to a little Bill Monroe and Ralph Stanley and them, and got bought me some tapes and listened to them, and I just liked that sound. Now, his old boy come in here one morning, 9.30 on Saturday morning. <laughs> Somebody said, Herb, go get that man. I said, I don't hear you play, play me a tune. Herb said, you might hear one. He said, I gotta get out of town, I gotta go. He went and got his mandolin, that's 9.30. He went and got his mandolin. And you know what time he left here? 5.30 that evening. <laughs> had to go, just had to go. Had what to go, he's gonna get out of town. He tickles me, Herb's getting a few years on him, and he'll say, I, I used to play, but that arthritis, all that arthritis, get, and he gets back there and plays some of this spice blue grace, and he's just all over it, you know. And I jokingly, say, how can you get arthritis? I'd love to be able to have arthritis if I could play like that. <laughs> Patton is his given name, but everyone knows him as Jojo. A lot of people want it the way it's practiced. Never happened with Joe. Every time it's played, it's different.
There's musicians right here in North, Western North Carolina just as good as there is anywhere in the country. Mm -hmm. In fact, sometimes back here in this barbershop, you'll hear some of as good music as you'll ever hear anywhere. I paid more and heard worse. <laughs> They have the common everyday working folks. Uh, some are, are very blessed with voices and, and abilities to play musical instruments. And I hope that tradition carries on because it's a, it's a wonderful pastime. It's very rewarding. Well, I was behind, I was behind the older girl, about my age. So it's an older lady, no disrespect. But she was opening mail. I mean, you could tell she, she was. And she would open that and put it over the steering wheel and was driving and holding and reading. I mean, open road. I, I'm very fortunate in that I'm doing what I, I enjoy. And I think that if you're not happy, uh, regardless of how much money you've got, if you're miserable, uh, it would be debatable. <laughs> That's just a choice a person has to make. But when you're fortunate enough to be able to make a few dollars, and call it a job, then that's, uh, I think you're a very fortunate person. But you know, old Dave's had a lot of trouble since he, since he'd been here. He come here, and uh, it wasn't long after he come here, he lost his mother. And then his only sister lived in Fayetteville, started back and had a bad wreck down here on 40, and killed her instantly. And then a little later, his dad got old age, and he, he died, and then, uh, David's wife got sick. She had what they call uh, Huntington's chorea. It's, a, it's not all that rare, but you don't see too many people have it. But he had, he had a rough row, I'll tell you. But during that time something happened to him, he decided that he wasn't gonna worry about nothing. He'd been here 42 years putting up with me and had all that trouble too, so he's bound to be a pretty good fella. I often say that we're, the. Uh, few few dummies that are left. Most have got smart and retired, uh, made money and left, or went busted, as the case may be. Nevertheless, we're one of the few that hung around. Well, I don't know. I, I've thought about that a lot. I uh, should retire, yes, and, but I ain't figured out how to do it yet. I need uh, need to do something, but I don't know what to do. So I just keep coming up here working every day till I. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll come up with an answer one of these days, I hope. <clears throat> I do hate to see the small town atmosphere slowly disappear. And it seems that that's the way it's going, possibly through necessity. But uh, there is opportunities if you look for them. And I, I, I do hope that somewhere in time that there would be a young person that would uh, be interested enough to, to come in here and try to make a go of it. Uh, hopefully while we're still able to uh, help introduce them and get them started a little bit, uh, hopefully to help them, not us, because we've, we've been there, we've done that. I don't want to sound too sentimental, but there's not many professions that people can come in 20 or 30 years later and call you by your first name and start reminiscing about old times and they come with their dad or their grandfather and we gave them chewing gum and so-and-so was playing the guitar and they remember details from that far back. Uh, that says a lot to me. And uh, uh, again, uh, they may not stop for a haircut. They stop to see the person or to hear the music or to get more bubble gum. And uh, uh, what can you say? I think that, that explains it all, uh, or it does for me, and it means a lot. Hey, 
If you like good country music, then nothing could be finer. Just to spend your Saturdays in Drexel, North Carolina. Down at the barbershop, they'll do the do si do Tune up a string banjo and rosin up the bow. They'll pick up their instruments and then they'll stroke the beat. They'll slap your friend right on the back, begin to pat your feet. Every day's a holiday down at the barber shop. Get the rhythm in your feet, you'll do the hippie hop. Ball headed man's brush. You brush your head, and then you take this shine rag and buff it, shine it. This here is a washer and a dryer. And that right there is a real easy one. That's a quarter pounder. Down at the barber shop, you'll love that country sound. Folks come from far and near to listen and hang around. Someone will get carried away and do a dance called the buck. If it's not the barber man, you can get a fresh hang This is Donut seeds, donut seeds. That right there is a same little tax, the tax shelter. A unique, unique bear catcher. You go out in the woods and you sneak up behind a great big old bear and you stick him in the rump and drop it down over a stump. Just be sure you've got a stump before you stick him because you probably make him mad. Ladies are always welcome there to hear them pick and grin Before the Saturday has passed through the big, big bottom head Down at the barbershop, folks come from miles away They'll come in from early morning there, they stay all day Because you're made to feel that ease to hear that country sound It's hard to tear yourself away, you just want to hang around you know, about about everybody around here is dying out. They really are. Many things to enjoy. Every minute of it. Do a little western swing and lots of old bluegrass. Just pass away your troubles. Oh, how the time does pass. Then you'll want to come again where music is no finer. 